Today's video, I got almost nothing done, but I made a lot of progress on each of the projects. Should I tell them? Say we made a lot of progress. I primed the bedroom. I primed the bedroom, the crown molding, and the baseboards almost finished it. I also learned how to use a paint sprayer, almost finished that, and then started cutting the molding. Almost finished that too. Lots of progress, nothing done. <laughs> right now but I am excited to finally get moving on a project right now we are finally going to get to the point of priming and painting the walls and it's been a long day just spent like 30 minutes putting the baby down um, I'm tired it's seven o'clock but this is kind of the me time of the day when I've got two little ones I am using from 7 p.m. till around 10 p.m. to get as much of this project along the way as I can. So I've got a primer right here. And this one's actually tinted gray because we're taking the walls to black. So I wanted to move it one step along the way. So it's gonna be a little bit darker. I've also got a paint tray. And right now I'm just gonna be doing the edge work. So I'm gonna be using a um, angled brush. Pour some in here. Actually, where am I going to put this? On a towel. Should have put a tarp down. That's what happens when you're tired. My goal by the end of today is to do all of the edges on the bottom. Um, I'm hoping that I can do that and then see how much time that I have left. It's 10 p.m. The Trim and the mold baseboards are primed. It took me way longer than I expected. It's time for me to go to bed. Till tomorrow. Right now, I'm gonna work on the top edge, the crown molding, and um, the edge of the ceiling. Let's just see how this feels. And I'm just gonna start painting away. I've made a ton of progress on priming. I've got most of the ceilings Done. I got this one little spot left right here above the window. It's, it's probably taken me seven hours so far of like in and out and eating and up and down the ladder and first time I've ever really done a room this big. I mean this wall is 12 foot ceilings and 14 feet across. So there's a lot of up and down the ladder. What's cool is that I don't think you can really feel it but in the room, the feeling that I'm getting already from the gray being here is that it's moodier and warmer. And I'm having like a moment of doubt that the black is just gonna be a little bit too intense, too dark, and I'm gonna regret it, but I'm trusting the process. And I'm trusting that it's just gonna be beautiful. not been sleeping well so I'm gonna just try and finish this wall and then um, work on the next walls the next chance I get. This is DIY life as a mom of a two and a half year old and an eight month old so it's finally finished all the edge work and the baseboards and I'm ready to just roll the paint the primer onto the walls and of course, 
at precisely that moment where you have that like space on the top is when my daughter refuses to nurse and she doesn't eat and she needs me to get into bed with her because she's teething. So slows me down and I'm really, really hoping to finish priming, but Becky is on her way and we are going to use a saw for the first. We're gonna make all the cuts for the molding and I'm gonna learn how to use a paint sprayer because the molding pieces that are really ornate, we're gonna spray the paint so that nothing gets like globby in all of the grooves. DIY day! <laughs> Yay! So because you have so much detailing, you can't just go straight down because there's so many sides and yeah, edges. Yeah, I want to get in all the yeah. crevices. Have at it. Yeah. There you go. Quick pass and let go. Nice. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. It's beautiful. Look how pretty this is turning out. This is the Faro and Ball off black and the finish is very matte. It almost looks like velvet. It's gorgeous. It's helping me have less doubt about painting the whole room black. If you don't have power tools, you can do this with one of these mm -hmm. miter boxes. <clears throat> you can buy this with the saw in it at Home Depot for like 20 bucks, so Ooh, pretty easy. Nice. So this has a little catch here, right? So if you put it like that, it's sitting crooked like this. So it's like, boom. Oh, and you want that. Okay. Yes, and you want that because then when you're pressing against it, it's not moving around the table. Okay. And we're gonna put this in here. Yes. So now, what we have to do to start with is determine which side is up, right? So this is the outside edge. The bigger, it goes on the outside. On the outside. Like the higher yes. on the profile. The higher on the profile goes on the outside. Okay. Which means that we are going to, every time, start the cuts there and come in. On this first cut, it's not, you don't really have to measure anything. You just wanna cut as close to the edge as possible. So you waste as little as possible. Exactly. And we're cutting at a so, 45. Yes, but not that way. This way. Exactly. This way. So sometimes what I like to do when I, I get like, sometimes angles, you get a little confused. So what I'll do is often as I'll just take this and I'll be like, okay, it's gotta go. And I'll just make a little mark like that. Okay. Like that versus that. You can use the little line in here to kind of give you a guide. You do have a little bit of wiggle room left right on the saw, which can be a problem. See, it's got like... Oh, so it's not like perfect, right. so you could like so you, mess it up. Right, so you don't want to go tight to the right down here and tight to the left up there. That's right. not correct, right? So you just pick a side and keep it tight to tight. that side. Okay. So you have to do a little bit of like creative pressure. So I'm going to clamp together, I'm going to press down, and I'm going to press against the table. Okay, molding okay? against the box, against the, the box, box against the table. I want to draw towards you for a couple, what's called a score. Okay, and I'm gonna do it again. We're scoring it. Okay. Scoring it. And then once I get a little groove in there, I'm gonna go back and forth. And I'm just gonna make sure, I don't wanna pull out here because then the saw can do this, right? Yeah. So you always wanna keep it trapped in there. So I'm going to the left and just gentle back and forth. Not too, it's not hard, it's not terribly fast. Just drive down. Boom. There. Boom. So now I'm gonna measure six foot six. Exactly. And then at the at top edge, go the other way. There you go. Grab, grab the handle, like you mean it. There you go. Like you mean it. Like you mean it. Mm -hmm. And watch that first finger. Yeah, I see it. There you go. And it's nice and gentle and it'll slide easier. Yeah, it's not like rawr. It's actually like pretty gentle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we have a toppy, we have a not top, it's not actually not the top piece, it's we have one a length piece. Okay, so this is the compound motor so I was telling you about. Going this is some real lock it in. Machine to practice on some scrap, because you always want to practice on some scrap. Okay, great idea. And the handsaw, you wore eye protection, which is good, but on this you're gonna need ear protection. I'm having like yes. like a little anxiety over the fact that we're about to use this. Ah, Let me just not like real, like you shouldn't stop. Yeah. I'm just like ready. I'm just like well, like I might I feel my heart like be racing. I like I totally understand. Do you wanna just make a cut with it to get that over with and then we'll get into the precision? No, no, no. Keep doing, keep doing it. All right. Do it. I come down, kinda of line it up. And again, I need those teeth to be on and next to the line. Because it's okay. gonna eat the sixteenth of an inch next to the line. Okay. So if I split the line, then it's eating that way. It's eating that way. Yeah. <laughs> Ah! 
Once it's solidly down, it's you can so let go. So much less dust. So much less dust. Really easy, and right? Like easy, way easier than the like. Doom, doom, yes. Doom, doom, doom. So I say with this, why don't we? And it's cleaner. You can tell. Oh, it's, the cut is so it's nice. much nicer. Yeah. The other one has like little bits and pieces that are like yeah. left. I'm sure it's fine, but this is like. Take the blade off the wood. Start it. Gently go. You're We're fine. doing it. You're fine. You got it. We're doing it. You're doing great. Just hang on tight here. There you go. Holy shit. <laughs> that is more powerful than Stop I thought. Stop a second. Take this left foot and put it here. So that's oh, your stance. There you go. Athletic stance. Athletic stance. Good. Press straight back. Move it this way. Yeah. Press straight back. Now go down. And then you get beautiful clean edges. I did it! You did such a good job. <laughs> that is like, it's actually like when you push the trigger, it's like when you shoot a gun, it's like, poof. Yeah. Like it has it like a kickback. It does. On my eye gear, my ear gear, Becky has taught me how to use that. And I'm doing it by myself. the same size so I'm kind of lining them up well I'll turn the camera around in a second I'm lining each piece up from corner to corner and making sure that they are perfectly the same size and then I'm gonna pair those together and then I'm gonna look at my sheet of paper where I created like a measuring a labeling system for which pieces are which and I'm gonna label them on the back so I know exactly which pieces go where marking system this whole wall is gonna be wall a and then as we make our cuts, we're gonna be able to be organized. So on the back of the molding, I'm gonna put A1, A2, A3, A4, all the way to A41, which is the chair rail that goes across. It's gonna help us be organized to like find exactly which piece is gonna go. Mm -hmm. 